My name is Halina Ward and I'm director of a small NGO, non-governmental organisation called the Foundation for Democracy and Sustainable Development. And one of our activities is working around how to bring future generations into democracy. And so we played a very active role in helping to set up something called the UK Alliance for Future Generations, which is a mixture of organisations and individuals working to bring long-termism, horrible word, but the opposite of short-termism, and the needs of future generations into the heart of UK policy processes and democracy. And we want to do that within the Alliance for Future Generations so that we can safeguard the earth and secure intergenerational justice. This notion of long-term thinking is coming through quite strongly today. Well, within the Foundation for Democracy and Sustainable Development, we're trying to find ways of getting democracy as a political system working for sustainable development. So sustainable development being that often elusive mix of environmental justice, social justice and economic development. And one of the problems that we face is that in our system of democracy, for very good reasons, we elect at national level, at UK level, we elect our representatives once every four to five years. And good reasons for that. It gives us an opportunity to hold them to account very deliberately. But at the same time, it means that the people we elect to represent us tend to be locked into short-term electoral cycles. And it's quite hard for them to break out of those electoral cycles, to think longer term and to think across the interests of successive parliaments to identify what are the needs of human beings, what are the needs of the UK in the world for the long term and beyond that how can we take account of the interests and the needs of future generations, people who haven't even yet been born. So what specifically are you doing to try and encourage that then? Well part of what we're doing is research. What is the nature of the problem? What are the areas that we can point to where these dilemmas are holding back progress? Climate change policy is one of the obvious examples. In this alliance that we're part of, the Alliance for Future Generations, we're also doing some work looking at how politicians, how our elected representatives, use the language of future generations. So when do they invoke a sense for the long term? When do they talk about the needs of future generations? And if I'm speaking personally, I'd say that my observation is that our elected representatives, our politicians in Westminster, tend to invoke the language of future generations when they want to take something away from people who are alive today, and not when they're encouraging us to think about our common needs as human beings across generations. So that's one of the things. And then we're also doing the kinds of things that campaign groups and advocates do when they get together. We're hatching plots for sign-on letters and stunts and spoof websites and all the rest of it. And you can expect to see a mo lot more of that from the Alliance for Future Generations in the future, I think. So would your hope be then that intergenerational issues becomes much more of a mainstream political issue? Absolutely. And the way in which intergenerational issues rise to the top of the political agenda is also really important. It really isn't very helpful if it becomes about a conflict between younger people alive today and older people alive today. It's really not very helpful if it's about sniping and and trade-offs and competition across the generations. I think the longer term way forward, if you like, is to think about our interests in solidarity across generations. And then you encourage younger and youngers and elders or younger and older people to work to, together really for the interest not only of future generations of here in the UK, but also with the very strong sense of our place in the world and our place as human beings in the sea of humanity, if you like. What do you think of the work that the Intergenerational Foundation is trying to do? It's really timely. And for me, my background is environment and sustainable development. And I also think some of the issues that the Intergenerational Foundation has chosen to work on, issues like pensions and housing, are some of the ones that are actually really important, particularly to that social justice pillar of sustainable development, but sometimes don't get a look in. So I'm very grateful to them, in a sense, for focusing on those issues, issues around how do economists take account of the future? What rates... Of, well, discount rates would be the technical term. How do, they, how do they count the value of things that are yet to happen? And bringing that out into the open, along with some of those fundamental social issues, like housing, 
like pensions, where we haven't yet got a strong collective understanding of the way forward or even of intergenerational injustice in the present. Those are really important areas to look at and uh, very timely NGO foundation to set up. I'm really looking forward to watching what they can do and to working with them as well because of course we're collaborating with them and look forward to lots more partnership efforts in the future. Alina, thank you very much. Thank you very much.